Hello, my name is Josh Lampert, and I am a research fellow with the New Age Skin Research Foundation. Today, I'm here with Dr. Lefkowitz. He is an associate at Advanced Dermatology PC. He is board certified in dermatology and Mohs microsurgery, and he is an expert in skin cancer, which is the topic of our discussion today. So Dr. Lefkowitz, what are the types of skin cancer? Well, there are actually many types of skin cancer. Um, the majority of them are very rare. I'm just going to focus on the three most common types of skin cancer, um, being the basal cell skin cancer, the squamous cell skin cancer, and melanoma, um, respectively. Basal cell is by far the most common. There are about 800,000 new cases of basal cell carcinoma diagnosed each year in the U.S., about 250,000 uh, new cases of squamous cell carcinoma in the U.S., and only about 50,000 cases of melanoma. Um, melanoma is the only one that is routinely, uh, potentially very, very dangerous, um, and it's most important for that to be treated and diagnosed as early as possible. Squamous cell carcinoma can also be aggressive, but not as commonly as melanoma, and the basal cell is more often just a local problem um, I don't want to trivialize its importance, but um, it's not usually the type of cancer that will spread. So Dr. Lefkowitz, before you mentioned that there were many types of skin cancer, how can each type of skin cancer be identified? Commonly the patient uh, himself or herself notices something new um, and brings it to the attention of a doctor and the doctor will then do a biopsy based on his or her clinical suspicion and that's how the diagnosis is confirmed. So many of these skin cancers do have a classical appearance, but ultimately the diagnosis is made with a biopsy. So Dr. Lefkowitz, I've noticed that a lot of people when they see that they have skin cancer, or they hear about it, or they're diagnosed with it, they automatically think, oh no, I'm going to die. How can you address this kind of fear? That is a common reaction, um, and a pretty normal reaction, but in truth, um, with regard to basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma, that uh, fear is really unfounded. Um, basal cell carcinoma, as I said earlier, almost never spreads and only about 2% of squamous cell carcinomas do spread. And even then, they're, um, they, I would call them treatable. The real problem is the melanoma and as I mentioned earlier, there are about 50,000 new cases in the U.S. a year. Um, there are about 7,500 deaths related to melanoma a year in the U.S. as well. Um, these statistics are, I think, from 2006, but the same is generally true now. Um, and it's extraordinarily important, therefore, for patients with anything new or anything that they think is suspicious, or even patients um, who just have not seen a dermatologist, to be seen yearly at least, or depending on the um, individual circumstance, because with melanoma in particular, the key to uh, successful treatment is early diagnosis. So what causes skin cancer and how can it be prevented? The conventional wisdom is that most skin cancers are caused by sun exposure or by sunburns or by long history of uh, being in the sun. That's true in large part, but I see a lot of patients who have skin cancers in places where the sun does not shine, as the saying goes. And um, a lot of it, I would have to admit, is of course related to the sun, and most of it is, but uh, genetics and family history really can't be underestimated, the importance of that. Is, is very, very large. So you said that skin cancer can be caused by sun exposure. So when it comes to sunscreen, what exactly does SPF mean on the bottle? And what number SPF should the normal person be using? SPF stands for sun protection factor, and it's a number we get by comparing the energy or the amount of sunlight it takes to cause redness on a patch of a patient's skin when that patient is protected by a given sunscreen compared, divided by the, the energy or the amount of sunlight needed to cause a red redness reaction when the patient is not covered by the sunscreen. So it's actually always a ratio of a, of a higher number to a lower number and the, the quotient is the SPF. One very common mistake is that a sunscreen of 30, for example, is twice as effective as a sunscreen with an SPF of 15 or a sunscreen with an SPF of 70 is twice as effective as something with uh, an SPF of 35. That's really very far from the case. It's, it's a um, logarithmic measurement and something with an SPF of 15, for example, will protect you against 95% of the sun's rays, 
where something with an SPF of 30, for argument's sake, will protect you from 97.5% of the sun's rays. Those are just, uh, those numbers are not exact, but it's just meant to, to illustrate that the difference between a sunscreen with an SPF of 30 is not that much greater than, a di than an SPF of 15. So really, the bottom line is, if the patient wears sunscreen, he's okay. And, you know, no matter what the patient uses, that's um, very helpful. Sometimes in patients with certain conditions and patients with uh, certain histories, it does become more important. I would say that if somebody were to ask me what sunscreen they should use, as a general rule, I, I like SPF 30. So, Dr. Lefkowitz, what is the proper way to use sunscreen? Well, there are several factors that have to be considered. Um, obviously, if you don't put it on your body and if you don't spread it where it needs to be, it's not going to help you, just like it won't help you if it's in your pocket. Um, when you go to the beach or when you go out to the sun, you really need to make sure that it's spread evenly um, in a thin film over all of your exposed skin. Um, it also has to be applied approximately 20 to 30 minutes before you're going to be out in the sunlight so that the sunscreen can bind. That's true, not with all sunscreens, but as a general rule, it's a, it's a good rule to follow. And if you go into the water and even if you're sweating excessively, it does need to be reapplied. So one has to be one has to be aware of these things and you really have to use enough and you use it a lot and use it frequently. Who is more at risk for acquiring skin cancer? People who've spent a lot of time outdoors uh, either as children or adolescents or or occupationally people with a family history of skin cancer and people basically with very fair very fair skin types very light skin and light eyes. Before you mentioned that radiation, sun exposure, UV radiation plays a role in skin cancer, what specifically does UV radiation do that results in skin cancer? UV radiation is a form of energy, and um, it's an energy that can penetrate into the skin, into the cells of the skin, and over time it causes damage to the DNA, to the chromosomes, which regulate the cell growth. and. As the cell, or as the as the genes, basically, we're talking about the genes, the chromosomes in the skin, accumulate damage, they lose their control and begin to grow uh, without restriction, and that's essentially what a cancer is. Most commonly, the way the ultraviolet radiation causes damage is by causing breaks in the chromosome strands, and the cells are less able to repair that damage as more and more damage accumulates, and the ultimate result is the development of a skin cancer. So what are some misconceptions that people have or mistakes that they make when it comes to sunscreens and skin cancer and the whole topic? Well, as I said earlier, the sunscreen has to be applied uh, to the skin where you want it to protect and you have to make sure it's applied frequently enough so that um, there's still sunscreen on the skin. But I just want to mention also people sometimes put on a lot of things on their skin, women in particular who want to put on makeup or or moisturizers, the sunscreen really should be put on last because the moisturizers all have water in them obviously and the water can break down the sunscreen and decrease the effectiveness of the sunscreen. Also many, many um, bug repellents can decrease the effectiveness of a sunscreen by about 60 percent so that's something to consider as well. Dr. Lefkowitz, is there anything, that, anything further that you would like to add to this topic? Yeah, I think it's important to say that people talk about skin cancer prevention you know, what can they do to avoid it, what can they do to prevent it. That's very important when we're talking about little kids and it's, it's extremely important for parents to be aware to protect their children from the sun. But for most adults, even young adults, I would say, the, the damage has very often been done by the time they ask this question. And I think the single most important thing they can do is be seen regularly by a dermatologist, even once a year or once every two years. But they really, everybody really should be looked over. It's quick, it's simple, and it's easy, and um, it really could save their life. Well, thank you very much for being with us today, and thank you for sharing all of this useful information. You're welcome.